Okay, question 235 of leak code, lowest common ancestor of a binary search tree. So given a binary search tree, BST for short, find the lowest common ancestor of two given nodes in the binary search tree. According to the definition of lowest common ancestor on Wikipedia, the lowest common ancestor is defined between two nodes, P and Q, as the lowest node in T that has both P and Q as descendants, where we allow a node to be a descendant of itself. So we have P as set at two, Q is set at eight. We need to find the lowest common ancestor of that. So in this binary search tree, where is two, where is eight? Two is here, eight is here. And this is the lowest common ancestor because it has both two and eight as its children. Now, if we wanted to find the lowest common ancestor of three and five, it would be four, right? Because four takes in both three and five as its immediate children. So let's dive into the solution to this. Okay, so our solution is going to be using some sort of recursive algorithm. And, and a thing to take into consideration here is that this is a binary search tree. So the binary search tree is ordered. So everything to the left of this root is less than the root and everything to the right of it is greater than the root. And we can use that to our advantage to create this solution. Okay, let's say we have P is equal to three, Q is equal to five. So let's begin this. So let's have a look at the binary search tree at the root. So the root is six. Now, what do you notice about P and Q? Well, they're both less than six. And because this is a binary search tree, we know that all values that are less than six are held within the left-hand side of the tree from the root. So we can use this to create a recursive function. So if the value, so p.val and q.val are both less than the value at root, then recurse down the left-hand side. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we're gonna recurse down the left-hand side. We're gonna update the root. So the root is now going to be two. So we're now at this point, is p.val less than two? No. Is q.val less than two? No. They're both greater than two. And what did we say about a binary search tree? If the values that are greater than the root are always found in the right side of the subtree. So we can recurse down the right side. So if p.val and q.val are greater than root.val, then recurse down the right hand side. And then we end up at four. So four is the new root. So we check, is p.val less than the root.val, which is four? Yes, it is. Is q.val less than the root.val? No, it's not. q.val is greater than the root.val. So we have one value, which is less than root.val, and one value which is greater than root of val. So if we have this condition, then all we need to do is return this value here because we have found the lowest common ancestor of both three and five. Okay, let's just run through another example to solidify the solution. Let's say P is equal to 11 and Q is equal to 13. So we start at the root, we look at the root, we check if P is less than root value. No, it's not. Is Q less than the root value? No, it's not. So based on the binary search tree, all the values greater than the root are held within the right subtree of the root. So we're going to traverse down that side. So at eight, is P and Q less than eight? No, it's not. So again, we traverse down the right side. We're at nine now. Is P.val and Q.val less than nine? No, they're not. They're both greater than. So we traverse down the right hand side. We get to 12. Is p.val less than 12? Yes, it is. Is q.val less than 12? No, it's not. q.val is greater than 12. So based on that, we can just return this value. So in terms of time complexity for this algorithm, this algorithm is O of n linear time complexity, where in worst cases, we visit each node within the tree. So say we had this, for example, just this tree of six to an eight, and we have p is equal to two and q is equal to eight, we are gonna visit each node within this tree. Space is O of n, where n is the height of the tree, so the space utilized by the recursive call stack. And in worst case scenario, we could have a skewed tree. So we could have just this tree on this side here. And each level we would add into the recursive call stack. Okay, so let's write this out. So if p.val is less than root.val and 
q.val is less than root.val. We know that p and q are both going to be found within the left side of the tree. So we need to recurse down the left side, passing in p and q. So if p.val is greater than root.val and q.val is also greater than root.val, we know that it's going to be found within the right side of the tree, so we can recurse down the right side of the tree. Again, passing in p and q. Else, all we need to do is at this stage, we'll have one which is on the left-hand side and one which is on the right-hand side. So neither of the two cases above will carry out. We can just return root because we have found the lowest common ancestor. Let's run this code. Okay, let's submit it. And there you have it.